Welcome to Rejuvenate Church Broadcast. We exist to create an environment where people can engage the hope of Jesus Christ, connecting people to their dreams and purpose in life, teaching transformational kingdom principles that allow that purpose to be lived out. Visit us on the web at www.rejuvenatechurch.com. You may also connect with us via Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Stay tuned at the close of today's message for more information about Rejuvenate. Let's join Pastor Jason Wilson now for today's message. We're going to turn in Mark chapter 5. And uh, you can also mark Genesis 1 and uh, Matthew 16 and Mark 16 and... I may reference several places, but Mark chapter 5, beginning at verse 1, is where we're going to kind of dig in today, and uh, and we're going to hang out there for a little while. If you don't have your word, your Bible, you can cheat on the screen, and it looks something like this. It says, and when... He had come out of the boat immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no one could bind him and not even with chains because he had often been bound with shackles and chains and the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles broken in pieces and neither could anyone tame him and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying out and cutting himself and when he saw Jesus from afar he ran and worshiped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said to him, come out of the man, unclean spirit. And then he asked him, what is your name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. And also he begged him earnestly that he would not send him out of the country. And now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. And so all the demons begged him, saying, send us to the swine that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. And then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine, and there were about 2,000. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea, so that those who fed on the swine fled, and they told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that had happened. Father, thank you for your word. God, I pray today that as there's a realm, God, of unclean spirits, God, that I believe that are trying to hinder God, your word from entering in not only to our ears but God sinking down deep within our thought processes God and entering then into our our spirits God I curse those very spirits today that are trying to limit your people from an education in the truth of the principles of the kingdom God that today they be liberated by your word that they no longer operate God in fear of the things that stand against them that they no longer God are ignorant father to the authority that lies within their life granted to them by the power and the spirit of the almighty God God I pray that you would anoint me today God that father I would speak as an oracle from heaven God that you would put on father just uh, uh, your presence God within me Lord and use me God as a pawn for your truth and God let your name be glorified let your kingdom be established God through your people and let us operate God within your power in Jesus name I, let me give some background really quickly. If you did not watch last week or have not, we're not here last week, I would encourage you to go and, and listen to it or watch it. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Um, can y'all do me a favor really quickly? Can you give our worship team a hand? <clears throat> That's, I don't know if we understand how powerful worship is. I just don't know that we get it, man. I think if we did, we would never quit. I I think that we would literally almost desire, although it's not balanced to to remain in that state, I think that would be our desire is to remain in that state. If you follow me, uh, the reality is is that we have a work to do here on the earth, but I don't know that I should enter into my work until I enter into a place of worship. And so... uh, uh, you know, I think it would be something different in our country if we would wake up every morning and instead of going and hopping in the shower or getting our bowl of cereal, maybe before we put our feet on the floor, we would enter into a place of worship. And, uh, and I, 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 I do believe it would radically change the scope of not just our day, but I think it would begin to change our nation. 
Uh, I see other nations that aren't afraid to bow before the Almighty God and worship and do it in a place that they're limited and that they're attacked and that they're persecuted. And, uh, and they're persecuted physically. And that's one thing that I don't, that, that we're maybe, we may be starting to enter into slightly a little bit in America uh, is a little bit of physical persecution. Uh, but here's the thing is that we are still persecuted because we have limited persecution just to mean from other people, but we are persecuted in the spirit every day. And so we have a responsibility to fight back. All right. I'm, I'm, come on, I'm building. I didn't even put that in my notes, but I'm building on something here. It's going to go along with what I'm saying. We have a responsibility to fight back. And I, I, I do not believe that we uh, have operated in a place that we are even confident in who we are in the kingdom of God as ambassadors of the almighty God to fight back in a spirit realm. Yeah. I, 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 we have... And you guys, y'all know you hear me, those that are with me regularly, you hear me crucify a lot of times common church culture and the fact that we don't have a problem waging war against the sin of our life, but we have a hard time waging war against the spirits that come against us. Are you following me? See, I don't, I, it's, it's, it's very easy because see, here's the thing is the warfare uh, against the sin of our life. Life really has is not really uh, we're not necessarily responsible for because Jesus came and shed his blood so that our sins would be covered and we would be righteously ordered uh, into the kingdom of God. And so we we're not afraid to confront that because that places a responsibility on Jesus. But he says, listen, I'm trying to empower you with my spirit so that you can then enter into a realm of warfare. The Bible says that the kingdom suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And so I've got to be, uh, to be willing to enter into a place of warfare in the spirit realm that I then take up uh, the, the sword that I've been given, which is, which is the truth and the word of God, and enter into attacking the things that are coming against me that I cannot see in a natural realm. We good? And so I believe uh, that we are persecuted uh, in America, but we're not persecuted in the way that we see other nations uh, in dealing with it with, with maybe people holding a gun to their head and people holding knives to their throats and, 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 and them having to have underground churches. We're free to worship, which I believe has really lulled us to sleep because we don't look in the spirit. We only look in the flesh. We only look at if I'm if nothing's coming against me in the flesh then maybe I ain't got to fight and everything is OK. And the reality is there's a war waging against you every single day before you ever wake up. It's happening as you sleep and no, you can't see it with your physical eye, which is why you have to dress yourself in the principles of the kingdom. So you can walk according to the spirit and see the things that are happening in the spirit realm and not just look in the natural. You'll begin to affect your environment when you begin to operate in a spirit realm. And man, I'm telling you, I, I, I know I'm entering into places that people are afraid to go this morning. I will, I will warn you right now that I, I know that there, there are people that are afraid to walk into the territory that I'm going to teach you about. And, and the problem with that is, is once I release the information to you, become responsible for it. But I do not believe you're here by accident. Angie, you good with this, script, this, this text here? We just talked about this not too long ago. I thought you might find this interesting. It says and when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. Now, this is exactly what I'm talking about. A man that had the ability in his physical nature to rest in a bed in a home somewhere because he was dressed in an unclean spirit and was persecuted by an unclean spirit was driven into a place to live among the dead. The, listen, there is literally, man, I, I tell you over and over again, there is a strategy against the plan of God for your life. And that's exactly what he's trying to kill when he's coming to kill, steal and destroy. He's not necessarily trying to take out the breath from your body or stop the heart pumping in your body. If he can get you to a place that you are dead to what God has established for your life, then listen, he is one. And so the enemy is trying to wage a war that can begin to affect you in the spirit realm and drive you to a place that you hang out amongst the dead of this world. God is, is literally trying, is wanting to inspire something inside of your life that lives. Everything that God puts in you is supposed to have life to it. It's supposed to produce fruit. It's, it's supposed to produce disciples. It's supposed to grow and make progress and move forward. But there's an enemy that is literally trying to get you to a place that you live among the tombs. The, 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 the spiritual involvement or the spiritual oppression or depression of, of your life is trying to drive you to a place that maybe you're waking up and breathing every day, but you live amongst the dead. Yeah. 
All right. And so you see this man that is, is, is dealt with an unclean spirit. And he's living in a place that's among the tombs. And it says that no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains before, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, and neither could anyone tame him. Now, y'all got to follow me here for a minute. I'm going to get to that word tame in a minute, but I want to look at the place that it shows us that no one could bind him. No one could bind him. Let me, let me try to run somewhere really quickly. Stay with me for a minute. Let me see where this is at. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now let me, I, I, I gave you an understanding last week that the translation of the word heaven has two different meanings in scripture. One is the actual dwelling place where God resides. It's his domain. And then we have the heavens, which is a celestial, which is when the spirit realm was separated from the physical realm. It, it was a realm of, of invisibility that we did not have the ability to see, but it still dwelt among us. It's a heavenly state. It's a place where the spirits roam and where the spirits live. And so we have the heavens and we have heaven and then we have the earth. And God said, I've, I've, I've come to give man authority and power that everything outside of my domain, everything within, uh, within earth and what was originally earth, which was the heavens, which were connected to earth before spirit was separated. I've given you the authority to have dominion over and to rule and to subdue. I, I got you like a deer in the headlights, right? And this spirit realm was separated and because we have operated separate from God's spirit, we have only tried to manipulate or control the things that we can see and have lost sight that God gave us the authority to control the heavens or the spiritual realms of the demonic spirits. And so the Bible says when Jesus came back, he said, here's my plan is that I'm not only going to give my life that I can pay for your sins and righteously order you in the kingdom of God. But the whole concept of me live, of, of coming here and dressing myself in flesh is in order to get the spirit back inside of flesh that not only are your sins covered, but you begin operating in the authority and the power and the dominion that I originally gave you from creation. And so I'm not just coming to pay for your sins. I'm coming to give you power. I'm coming to teach you how to live as the authority of heaven. I'm coming to display how an ambassador of the kingdom is supposed to live out life. And when I told you to have dominion and to subdue the earth, that's exactly what I meant. And Jesus said, I'm going to come and I'm going to reestablish you in the kingdom of heaven. And I'm going to give you back the keys of the kingdom of the heavens so that you can subdue everything that treads upon under your feet. Now, what's interesting to me is he says, and whatever you bind on earth did whatever you do in the physical realm has spiritual implications. And so that you have authority again, I've established my authority in your life that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in the heavens. And whatever you loose on earth will be loose in the heavens because I have given you the authority to command the spirits. And then I jump back and I find out that it's very interesting that that Jesus and God uh, has established us to hold the keys of the kingdom and to bind and loose the spirits that come against the purpose of God. And it says here that nobody could bind him, not even with chains. Y'all, you follow me, Michael? You with me, bro? Yeah. That nobody could bind him, not even with chains. See, not only could they not bind him in the physical, but they could not bind him in the spiritual. And had they had the authority and understood how to walk and, and being able to bind in the spiritual, the chains in the physical wouldn't have been necessary. But he said, because you've not taken authority over me in the spirit, I'm going to show you that I'm going to take authority over you in the physical. Not only are you, am I not allowing you or you not taking authority to enter in my realm, I'm going to walk into yours and laugh in your face. That no one could bind him, not even with chains, because, and this is, man, this is what breaks me. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. This is our picture of church culture in America. Is that we understand that we get up on Sunday morning and we go to church, and we make relationships of great Christian people, 
And as long as we do that and we abide by what we believe are uh, the traditions or the laws of me just going and being involved and getting in church, but I don't ever grow in understanding who I am as an ambassador in the authority of God in the spiritual realm, I can walk and literally be lulled to sleep because I feel like I'm doing all right. And yet when I encounter people that are dealing with issues in their life, it goes far beyond than just what the eye can see, but it reaches into a place in the spiritual realm. And because I have not entered into a place in the spiritual spiritual realm myself that I understand the authority that I have in God I can bring no change to their life and so I know how to walk them to my church and I know how to lift my hands with them and I know how to say nice little sweet prayers that makes them feel good today but tomorrow when they get up they're still dealing with the same devils they were dealing with yesterday because there was nobody that walked in the authority of the spirit that could bind the spirit that was taking over their life and we've entered into a place in a church culture that we're okay with this. Because it, it, it forces me to walk into a realm that I'm not comfortable with going in. It forces me with having to step and begin to take authority and be confrontational with things that I can't see. With literally things that the Bible has told me are trying to take authority over my life. I don't have no problem getting mad at the cashier at the Walmart for keeping me in line too long, but I can't talk to a devil with some smack. What's up with that? The Bible says that we war not against flesh and blood. I ain't got no business wasting my time fussing at her when I ought to be talking to things in the spirit. And so we're, we're afraid to enter into a place that literally can bring, bring freedom to people's lives because here's what I, you've got to understand. As I taught you last week, man, that the spirit realm, when man decided to sin, the spirit realm and the earth realm were literally operating as one. The Bible teaches us that God and Adam walked and talked in the garden, man. They literally were as one. They had companionship, and, and it was regular companionship, man. And it just happened just constantly. And, and he walked literally according into, in the spirit as the Bible teaches us. But when they made it decision to allow disobedience to come in the spirit realm was separated from man and, and, and we have again we, we operate with this picture of not even realizing that if it's out of sight it's out of mind if it's out of sight if I can't see it then it must not be happening if I can't see it then it must not be real if I can't touch it, if it's not something that, that tickles my senses where I can taste, uh, taste, touch, or smell, or hear, then it must not be legitimate. And if I can't put my hands on it, then I must not can put my voice to it. And so we, we are okay with entering into this place that, that, that I, can, I can coddle people, but I can't change their life. I can lead them to a place of the cross where their sins are forgiven, but the reality is, is the, 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 and this is going to challenge some of you, man, I'm sorry. But the forgiveness of sins and the covering of those sins was literally just a, a very small part of, of the mission of Jesus. We celebrate what he came to spend about six hours doing. And we disregard three and a half years that he taught how to be an ambassador. That he walked teaching people how to overcome and cast out demons. That he taught people how to see things in the spirit realm. That I can lay my hands on your eyes and you can see again. And I can speak to the things that are binding your legs from you getting up and walking again. I can literally forgive sins. The Bible even tells us that we have the ability to forgive sins by producing information that is true to the kingdom and seeing a response in their life. I have the ability to be able to judge according to the authority of the heavens that yes, your life is lining up with the authority of heaven and with the principles of heaven and your sins are forgiven. That's why the Pharisees challenged Jesus. How in the world can you forgive sins? Because I know what my God says. Because I know the principles of my God. Because I know that as they, as they line up their life with the, the principles of my God and operate in his obedience, literally the things and the chains of their life are forced to leave because God's spirit enters in. Amen. I don't have to guess. I'm not even the one given the authority for it to happen. I have understanding because it has already happened in my life that as they produce the truth of the kingdom and the principles of the kingdom in their life, that literally the things that are trying to bind them have to leave. Yeah. I'm just telling you what I know. And so I said, man, ain't nobody got no chance to even bind you. Not even with chains. Not even with chains. 
The chains have been pulled apart by him and the shackles broken in pieces. And now here we go. It says, and neither could anyone tame, tame him. The actual word of the word tame, the actual translation, and I don't even know if I'm saying it right, but it's damazo. And the word damazo means subdue. Are you following me for a minute? See, Jesus is calling them out on their original creative state. He says, ain't nobody, couldn't nobody bind them? And I've already given you the authority to do that. Not only that, but could, nobody could subdue them. And then we jump back really quickly to Genesis. And it says in Genesis, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God he created, male and female he created. And then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, and tame it. Fill the earth and tame it. Fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Have, subdue it. Tame it. And so we, we, we jump back here again to Mark and, and, and we find out that, man, not only could they not bind him, but they could not tame him. There was nobody that had an understanding of how to walk in the presence and the authority of God. Are we all right? No, this is telling me that it says nobody. It said he had been bound before with physical chains, but he had been broken. Nobody had the ability not to bring a chain to, the, to, the, to this whole thing. Nobody had to bring the authority of the kingdom to this thing. People was trying to do stuff in the physical realm and wrap him up in chains in the physical realm and shackle him in the physical realm and was never dealing with it in the spiritual realm. And, and because of that, this man's life had been tormented and he had lived among the dead. And not only that, but he had begun to affect the environment around him. This man had become a staple in their environment. Right. Yeah. Now, you've got to understand if this man becomes a regular, a staple in their environment, how does that begin to condition the environment that he lives in? And so now we see a territory that understands this is what I'm supposed to do from a church standpoint. I'm supposed to bring him to church and I'm supposed to teach him how to read his Bible. And how, here, let me give him a devotional and tell him to read this every day. And, and let me let me teach him. OK, let's say the, the, the Lord's Prayer and let's do it like this. But nobody has had the ability to begin speaking to the demons of his life. Nobody could subdue him. Nobody could tame him. The word, again, it means tame means to involve obedience and restraint. To involve obedience and restraint. Basically, it was to bring it into bondage by force. I told you last week that, that in, in order to, to uh, you know, the, that the word subdue and, and trample upon literally means to have the authority, as a Roman soldier did, putting a spear in their back and binding them and walking them out with that spear in their back, daring them to move. And so nobody had the ability, man, literally to walk this devil out of this environment. Nobody had the ability to walk this demon, this spiritual uh, uh, involvement out of this territory with any kind of authority and power. Daring it to move in the process. Daring it to come back in. Daring it to involve itself in our community. Daring it to involve ourselves in our marriages, in our lives, in our children, in our purpose. Nobody stepped up with the authority to said, I'm about to rid this place of this thing so that we can begin to live again. Yeah. And that ought to be the heart of the kingdom. Is that I'm willing to step up, man, because I know who I am, because I have invested in myself the truth and the principles of the kingdom, that I'm not afraid of any environment to walk in and begin to command the principles of God. And if nobody's going with me, that's okay. I don't need anybody to go with me. I only need the one above to empower me with his anointing and his authority. And if I speak his truth, I'm not doing it as me. I'm doing it as him. <laughs> and so I walk according to his authority if I can begin to understand his principles. We see, we see this man that's living in a place of the dead moments, the dead places of his life. The enemy has tried to rob his very existence and the purpose that God has established for him. And this is what I think is intriguing. A man that is riddled by demonic presence when he sees Jesus runs and worships him. Now this is twofold. Because it says he cries out. He cries out with a loud voice and he runs and worships him. I can only imagine the torment of this man that had a desire within himself to live the way that God created him. 
But he had never encountered anybody that had the authority to free him. Mm. I feel the presence of God on that one. Begging. Even in his shame and his brokenness and the indwelling of the unclean spirits in his life. Still had a desire to live the life that God had built for him. And when he saw one that could literally change his life, he ran and worshipped him and cried out because he was tired of being bound. The man wanted to live. How many people have we, do we encounter in our lives every day that are literally in this very place that they go home when you don't see them and they live among the tombs and they live among the dead and they live among the broken and they've been trying to get free for years but they've never found anybody that understands the power of the kingdom that can walk into their life and begin speaking some truth and cursing some demonic spirits and break loose the chains of their life whether I ever carry them to a church or not. The strategy of of the kingdom is not to get them to the church, it's to get the kingdom in them. If I can get the kingdom in them, then they'll gather with their kingdom people. But my responsibility is to go in and teach them and empower them with the spirit of God and the obedience of the principles of heaven and bring a literal change to their life that will excite them to a place that they're hungry for more. But how many do we encounter that are in this place broken? How many in this place have walked in a place of tombs in your life? Maybe you walked in this morning and you literally have been in a tomb of your life and nobody else recognizes it. Yeah. <laughs> See, it don't teach us here that this man had any difference in his physical appearance. It only teaches us that chains couldn't bind him and then he lived among the tombs. So we don't know where you go when you leave here. We don't know where others go when you leave them from their job or from your, your, your school or, or, or your family gathering or whatever it may be. They may literally walk back and live in the tombs and then walk back out and you never see anything different about their life. They still look like the same old Jack and Jill, but inside they're broken and they're in chains and bondage because of the things that have been happening and been applied to their life. And at some point in time, we got to begin to walk in some discernment of the spirit to recognize there's something going on. I've, there's, there, there literally is something about being able to walk in the spirit of God that you recognize things that, that do not comprehend or do not agree with the spirit that lives in you. And it has absolutely nothing to do with the person that you're encountering. If, if, if we don't have a mindset... That literally every realm that I walk in, every territory that I walk in, every place that I go each day, every person that I encounter, whether I'm in a classroom or whether I'm at my job or whether I'm with my family or whatever it may be, God has sent me there strategically to help move the kingdom forward. To help move the kingdom forward. The kingdom never has a place that it stands still. It's not a place that will ever be stagnant. It's meant to make progress. And you are literally the ambassadors or the pawns of God that God is using and placing strategically in places to move the kingdom forward. So we can't walk around with our head in the clouds or in the sand and not begin to recognize things by the spirit. Very few times will people actually run to you and beg to be changed. Because they're afraid of the chains of their life. They're afraid to expose the bondage. They're afraid for you to see the grave clothes. They're afraid for you to see the brokenness and the pain. They're ashamed to tell you where they've been, what they've done. They're ashamed to let you know the spirits that are controlling them. They're ashamed to tell you about the thoughts that run through their head. They don't want you to see that. They want you to see the clothes they put on every day to look just like you do. And it takes somebody that understands the principles of the kingdom and the authority of the spirit to call it out. Yeah. But we got to be willing to enter into that place in our own life. Where am I at? He says he ran from afar and worshipped him. Now the term, the the terminology here, worship, is literally an understanding that he ran. He ran to Jesus and fell face first on the ground and kissed the ground because he recognized there was a superior in his presence. That's the translation of that word worship. We're not talking about that he just did this. He sang some songs and what a mighty God we serve. The man literally, even in his, even the, 
And, and here's what I would even challenge you is that the man himself did not run to the authority. The spirits that were subject to the authority ran to him because they had to recognize the authority in their presence. And they knew that they have to bow to the almighty God in the name before every name. And when they saw the authority enter into their presence, they ran and fell prostrate on the ground and began kissing the ground of the superior of their life. This wasn't a man that was responding this way. This was the spirits that were inside of him. The thousands upon thousands of spirits that had riddled his life literally recognized the authority and ran to it. Y'all ain't getting me this morning. Listen, we, we, God gives us this, grants us this same authority. The only reason Jesus was displaying this was so I could learn it and become it. And I'm not telling you that people ought to run and fall at your feet and kiss the ground you walk on, but the spirits that are inside of them should recognize the authority of the spirit that lives inside of you. The Bible teaches me that greater is he that lives inside of me than he that lives inside of the world. And it has a responsibility to call it out and bow to it. If we have, oh Jesus, if we ain't got spirits in people's lives bowing to the spirit that's in ours, something is wrong with the spirit that's in us. I got to back away. Y'all going to get scared of me in a minute. There was a spiritual awareness and a recognition of the authority. Here's the thing is they didn't need to be told who it was. They didn't need to be told who it was that entered, in, entered the presence. These spirits knew who it was because, see, they were once subject to him in, 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 the, in the kingdom of heaven. And that authority did not change. And so even though they were cast out, it still lets us know that I recognize who is still my master and my creator. And I, I, may live, uh, I may live adverse to the lifestyle that he desires for the rest of my spiritual being, but I still recognize who made me and I still have a responsibility to bow to the one that built me. It recognized the authority and they ran and bowed down to it. They didn't nobody need to introduce Jesus. Ain't nobody need to tell them they was coming. Ain't nobody need to, 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 to welcome him there. Nobody did nothing. The, the spirits inside of this man ran to him and bowed in the awareness that a superior was in their presence. Now here's what I find is interesting. Is that they said, what have I to do with you, Jesus? Let me stop right here. No, no, uh, let me go further. Son of the most high God. Let's stop right there. What have I to do with you, Jesus? The first names... This ought to encourage you right here. I'm just telling you right now. The first name that they began to call out was not the name of his spiritual title. It was the name of his humanity. Which lets you know that if Jesus dressed himself in humanity and put on the name Jesus and not just son of the most high God or the Christ or the Messiah, or the Prince of Peace, or the Lord of Lords, but he also had to put on the name of his humanity named Jesus. It was because he was putting literally you on and letting you know that my, the spirit that lives inside of my humanity lives inside of you. And if it has to recognize the authority of me and my humanity, it has to recognize the authority inside of you and your humanity. Yes. Good. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. And then it says... Son of the Most High God. Now watch this. Son, the term, the, the, the translation son here <laughs> is me. Mean, it means somebody sharing the same nature of his father or resembling his character. This literally is the picture of in his image. Y'all, y'all, come on. You got you follow me? Jesus is displaying Jesus here. We're talking about Jesus, the son, is displaying the literal creation state of in his image. Jesus is showing you that you were built in the same way that I'm walking right now. You were built in his image. And not only am I a son, but if you accept the blood payment of my life for your life and you're righteously ordered back into the kingdom of God as an adopted son, you also become a son of the most high God. You also have the ability to resemble the character of your father. You also have the ability to live in the image of your father. Jesus was literally just displaying the creative state of humanity. Walking in authority. 
They said, Jesus, son of the most high God. Now, what I like about this is, 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 is the spirits not only run and bow and kiss the ground because they recognize superiority, but then they all begin to call him out according to his superiority. The translation of God there means theos, and what that means is the creator of everything. The owner of everything. What they recognized here was that I'm talking to, to, I'm talking to a man that has been sent with the spirit and the authority of the one that owns it all. And I know that I'm walking around in a territory that he never gave me permission to live in. I'm talking to the one that owns this territory and he's posted a do not trespass sign and I ain't listening. And so now the owner of the territory is coming to call me out on the laws I've broken. Mm. Come on. Are you following me right now? They recognize that, that the most high God, I'm bowing. They literally are begging. They're begging for mercy of the one that owns the territory that they've entered into. I know I'm not supposed to roam here. But there's never been a spirit that's told me otherwise. There's never been an authoritative spirit that has cast me out of where I was not welcome. And so I've made my home here. But now I see the one that owns it has showed up and I'm scared. I see the one that owns it and I'm scared. I've thrown myself at the foot of my superior and I began to beg for the mercy of the one that literally created the ground that I'm kissing right now. And it says, and it comes in the form of this man called Jesus who looks just like you and I do. If, 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 that, if, if that doesn't stretch you beyond just your feel-good salvation message that that's the only reason we live here. Man, God literally wants to dwell inside of you and not just as this kumbaya spirit, but one that operates with power. Amen. One that totes a sword on his side. And as you begin to command his information, literally things have to change. If we speak this and nothing happens, it has nothing to do with the word of God. It has everything to do with the spiritual authority behind it. Which means that if I speak this and nothing changes, then it must not be the authorization spirit that lives inside of me. Come on now. I know you ain't like that too much, but I'm just telling you right now. If I begin to produce God's truth and thing chains don't break from people's lives, it's because apparently I'm not living with the authority of the power that has the ability to speak the truth. I'm just speaking words. And is waiting on somebody to come in humanity in the image of the almighty God. And again, subdue the territory that they were given. For he said to him, come out of the man unclean spirit. He didn't ask. He didn't ask. He didn't say, look, if you, if you feel good about it right now, if everything's okay, if this is the right time, if you're okay with sharing the problems of your life right now, if you're not, you can call me back later and it's all right. And, and if you want to come to my prayer group, with, if you don't, it's okay. It's okay. I'll let you live in that state another week. That don't bother me. <laughs> Y'all didn't catch that one. <clears throat> now, see, here's the thing. Is the spirits that live inside of them are going to avoid the authority of your voice. And so they're going to put you off as long as they can. But at some point, you've got to begin to recognize that I've been sent to bring freedom because the voice that they're speaking with is not one of their own. Because the voice that's inside of them and their humanity is crying to be free from the tombs they're living in. But the other voice doesn't recognize that there's an authoritative spirit yet. And so I'm not, I'm not about to let you continue to live in the state you're in. And l uh, let me give you a little practical understanding. That doesn't mean that you're in the center of the mall here and you all of a sudden got to go hoodoo and shaking and slopping everywhere. You can, hey, you can begin to curse things in, 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 you know, with your mouth and your breath and, and your words and nobody else has got to hear it but the Spirit does. Are you following me? I ain't always got to run up to people and just do this here. What if I worry a lot less about doing this here and I do a, a worry a lot more about cursing the spirit that's hanging over him and living inside of him and I just begin to speak to it and curse it and call it out and recognize it. Here's the thing, man, is when you get that spiritual discernment of the authority that's inside of you, you can literally look at people and know there's something driving them that's not them. That's right. I don't even sometimes need to tell them about it. 
because that would cancel my opportunity to begin to curse it. Anyway, he said, come, come out of the man, unclean spirit. And he asked him, what's your name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. Now that word legion, you've heard before that it's, uh, a lot of people say it's a thousand. The reality is, is it's, this is written in Greek language in the Roman times. And so we have a picture of Roman culture and armies in this place. And there were 6,000 that were in, uh, in the division of this legion of the Roman army plus infantrymen. And so we're really operating probably in a place where there might be eight or 9,000 people in this particular legion division of the Roman army. And when he says legion, that lets you know that, man, this dude's covered up with some junk. We ain't talking about a few. Matter of fact, they even said, oh, because we are many. We are many. And he begged him earnestly that he would not send him out of the country. I'm going to try to bring this home, man. God, there's so much information here. It says, when they recognize the authority, they said, we're, we're basically begging you by God that you do not torment me. Now, here's the thing, and this is what I need you to understand. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that they, they recognized or they began to tell God that it wasn't time, that it was not the time that they were to be basically cast into the abyss. There is an appointed time that all the spiritual darkness of this world will be judged by God and they will be cast into the eternal lake of fire. That is the moment where they will meet their eternal demise. Until then and until that God is the only one that has the ability to operate in that level of condemnation and authority that he's the one that can cast them out to their death. Are you following me? And so they begged him and said, have you come to torment us? Have you literally come to examine us and put us under the microscope so much so that it literally will be excruciating for who we are? Have you come to do it before the time that you're appointed to? Have you come to do it before the end of the ages when we know already that we'll be cast into the abyss? And Jesus said, no, because... That's not my time. I only can operate according to what God has given me the realm to operate in the earth, and that's to bind. What I'm here to do is to put on display what my brothers and sisters have the ability to do. Because you don't have the ability to cast or condemn eternally into the abyss, but you do have the presence to bind. They said, have you come to torment us before our time? Have you come to torment us before our time? Have you come uh, to deal, do away with us before? Have you come to put us on trial and to examine us, to judge us before our time? And he said, no, listen, I'm just coming to bind you. I'm coming to show you how my people can operate on this earth. You don't have the ability to curse them to, to damnation forever, but you do have the ability to bind them. And so they asked, listen, if it ain't time yet, then how about you grant us permission to run and, and, and dwell within those swine?" And at once, Jesus gave them permission. Now, has anybody ever asked a question, why in the world did he give them permission to run into the pigs? I know you have. <laughs> right? Have you ever given them permission to run into the pigs? Ask them to question that. And let me, let, me, let me give you a little interesting fact about this. We live, or they lived in a, in, in a culture where people were not able to touch or eat the pigs. If you touched or ate the pigs, you were in an unclean state and you were being disobedient to the word of God. So here's what happens is because Jesus has not been granted the timing or the authority yet to cast them into the eternal abyss. He still knows that I can operate in the power of binding the spirits that they can no longer torment man. But I do have to send them somewhere. And so I'm going to be strategic about this and I'm going to send them into something that man can never touch again. I'm going to send them into something that man, so that they can't begin to attract or touch, or they can dwell with inside of man. Then I'm going to send them into something that man has been forbidden to touch. And if man touches them, basically he deserves to that because it's out of disobedience to my word. So Jesus says, here's what I'm, I'm going to show you, man, how you can operate in your authority that I'm going to take and I'm going to bind them and grant them permission to run into the swine that man can't touch. So that they'll no longer operate in this territory. Now, this is what's interesting to me. Is that what they asked there 
and this is really, I'm going to try to drive this home right here. That what they asked there is that we're okay with leaving this man if you don't tell us we got to leave this territory. Follow me. Because there are literally spirits that have been put on assignment for the territory of your life, for the territory of your household, for the territory of your children, of your job, of the neighborhood you live in, the county you live in, the place you go to school. There are literally been, been demonic spirits that have placed on assignment by the enemy for a territory in your area. And it's okay if they're cursed out of a spot as long as they don't have to leave the territory. Are you following me? This is why we get into a place where people deal repetitively with generational curses. Yes, this is why we get into a place where people can, can experience a feel-good moment for a time being, but they can never experience deliverance or freedom. It's because they're walking into a place uh, and, and beginning to speak to things that literally have been on their dad and their dad's dad and their dad's dad dad. And it's, it's starting to work itself into their life because there have been people in the past that have begun to look at it and pray for it. But nobody's had the authority to cast it out of the territory. And until somebody grows up and decides, I understand who I am in the kingdom of God and the authority that lives in me. I'm going to cast this thing out of the territory that where it's trying to work its way into, it won't make it any further because I won't allow it to happen. It's got to recognize the superiority that lies what's inside of me and what's trying to trickle its way through the territory of my family will never make it farther past me. Because they're driven to operate by territory. And so when you've had adultery run through your family for the last three generations. And oh, you've prayed about it. But who's took authority over it? And when alcoholism and abuse has begun to work through generations. Abandonment of parents. And children. We've prayed for it, but who's took authority over it? Who stepped in and said, no longer will it begin to infect my territory? Devil, you've had long enough to run through my dad, and you've worked it enough through my dad's dad, and I'm sick of seeing it. It's causing my family pain, and I see it trying to work itself inside of me right now, and I refuse to be driven to a place of the tombs. I'm not about to watch my babies go through the same mess that my dad went through. Amen. I'm not about to watch my mama deal with the alcoholism that killed her mama. I'm not about to watch my children suffer through an abusive household. I'm not about to watch my school be ridden with death and, 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 and oppression. I'm not about to allow, the listen, the territory of Anderson County, which is one reason why I know we're here, has been so heavily oppressed for so many years that I've come to confront it. And it has happened for, for generations upon generations. My great-grandparents lived here, and it happened back in the 50s and 60s. And God said, it's time that somebody steps up that understands the authority that lies inside of them is not afraid to walk into a realm and confront them eye to eye because you don't walk as your own. You walk in the power of the Almighty God. And I'm tired of it becoming cyclic. At some point, we've got to confront the, the, the strategy of the enemy that has been sent to the territories of our life and begin to bind it in the name of Jesus. And let me tell you something. Yes, you have the authority to do that. It will not happen loosely. It will not happen flippantly. You cannot. You cannot abandon this thing right here and expect to operate in the authority of God. You cannot abandon getting on your face before the all. If the spirits bow down and kiss the ground that the superior walks on, why can't we do it? If I can't find a place in my home or my life somewhere where I begin to bow before the almighty God and begin to call out and just pray according to the leading of his spirit and let him begin to reflect my life, put a mirror in front of me so I can see the pride of my life. I can see the frustrations of my life that he can clean me out to deposit his spirit in. Don't ever think for the world that you can begin to curse stuff in your life. Wow. We've been cursing stuff for years and it's been laughing back at us. 
and still ruin the territories, still ruin our schools, still ruin our homes, our marriages, our children, our addictions, our diseases. Come on, man. It, 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 it's no coincidence that cancer is repeating through generations. And at some point, we've got to take authority over the territory that God has granted. You don't live where you live. You don't go to work where you go to work. You don't go to school. You don't have the friendships. You're not in the relationships. You, you're not where you're at by accident. Just as the enemy has strategized the demonics to enter into a territory, to corrupt it and bind it, God has sent you into that place to bring it freedom. It's time we recognize our assignment and stop giving away to the ones that know theirs. Because the enemy ain't stopping for nobody. Except the one that knows who they're sent by. I'm going to close up there, man. Let's, let's, let's stand up. <clears throat> Let me show you this really quickly. I want you to look at this. This is at the end of that passage. It says, and then they came to Jesus. And when those in the town had came to Jesus, they saw the one who had been demon possessed and had the legion. Now watch. <laughs> and he was sitting, which means he was at rest. And he was clothed, which means that he was covered. And he was in his right mind, which means that he was at peace. the picture of the environment that God has put you into when you begin to recognize who you've been sent by. That as you invade the territory that God has strategized you to invade, that when you leave that territory, the people that are around you are at rest, they're covered, and they're at peace. People that have been broken for years cycles in your family that have been run rampant for years are now at rest and they're covered by the Almighty and they're at peace. You have been listening to the Rejuvenate Church broadcast. If you shared in today's service with us, visit us at www.rejuvenatechurch.com and send us a message. We would love to hear from you. Rejuvenate Church invites you to be our guest if you're in the upstate of South Carolina. We are located in Anderson, South Carolina, inside the Anderson Mall across from Books A Million. Our service times are Sundays at 1045 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. For up-to-date information, visit our website or connect with us on social media. We are found on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Pastor Jason Wilson and Rejuvenate Church desire to bridge the gap that divides race, age, and economic status. We are transforming culture by engaging and shaping men and women through relationships and positive kingdom influences. Thank you for listening. We look forward to the opportunity to share with you again at Rejuvenate Church.